Welcome to GFN Gaming, you exemplary I'm Russ, and in today's battle, we test the sneakiest McSneakings of the Tau Empire against the Seers of all things Snucked, an Impulsor Kill Team of Space Marines. Today we'll be playing the second mission from the third table of matched play missions, Duel of Wits. Each time a friendly operative performs the gambit action you score one victory point. Also at the end of each turning point if you control more objective markers than your opponent you get two victory points. That's the big money right there buddy. Each turn players nominate an objective more than three inches outside of their drop zone to be a priority objective until the start of the next turn. Operatives can perform the following action, Gambit. An operative can perform this action within two inches of a non-exhausted priority objective marker it controls to gain one CP. It is then exhausted until the next turn. So that's the mission, let's have a look at the terrain briefly. These terrain features are going to be heavy and obscuring. These terrain features are going to be light and traversable and here are the vantage points. So that's the mission and the terrain, now let's look at the teams taking part. Hailing from my own custom chapter of Blood Angels, the Blood Sworn, we're drafting a kill team of Incursors. It's a pretty uninspired team, it gets like zero options in terms of gear, which is a little dull, but thematically they are probably one of the more perfectly suited teams for the theme of kill team, really. Everyone in this team asked for the same thing at Christmas, which is for the Oculus Bolt Carbine and Combat Blade. Three of them will also have smoke grenades. Arguably they're better in combat with that 3-5, but combat's kind of a worse place to be. But they're against Tau, and there's two things we know about Tau, right? Weird feet, bad at combat. Everyone give it up 440k's favourite fighting fish, men. Leading the Tau is going to be Stealth Suit Larry here. Unpopular opinion for anyone who doesn't play Tau, but these guys should definitely be APL3. The leader is going to be armed with a fusion blaster and thanks to the FAQ he will be hitting on threes. The rest of the fire team is going to be made up of two more stealth suits, both of which will be equipped with burst cannons. The leader is going to have the stimulant injector and both of these guys are going to have target lock. The second fire team is going to be a fire warrior fire team and I'm opting to take two drones, one shield drone and one DS8 tactical support turret. I'm going to call him Tim though, Tim the turret, Timmy turret. Timothy Tourette's. And the rest of the team is four Fire Warriors. They're going to be armed with the Pulse Rifle because I think the Pulse Carbine was a misprint because it's the same but you can't use the tactical ploy with it. So kind of stupid really. But anyway, with that annoying waste of ink that is the Pulse Carbine, we move on to the first initiative roll. Tau win the roll off and they're going to choose to be the attackers giving the Blood Angels choice of deployment and they're going to pick this zone. Deployment with the Incursors is, is pretty standard, there's no, there's no highs and lows, there's no special weapons, they're all interchangeable, it's, it's kind of one note. Most of these deploy in the Engage order, but the one on the far right is in the Conceal order, I just used the wrong token. Not much cover in the Tower's deployment zone, but they managed to hide away the Fire Warriors. The Stealth Suits are out in the open a little bit more, but due to their special rule, they're in the Conceal order, and they're further than two inches away, so they'll always be concealed. Everyone on the Tower team is going to be in the Conceal order, apart from Timmy the Turret, because Timothy cannot be in the Conceal order. He has to be in the Engage. So here's how we're looking after the deployment. Spotting a small patrol of fire warriors nearing the perimeter of an imperial listening outpost, an equally small force of incursors move to intercept them. However, as the incursors level their oculus bolt carbines to take aim, a ping on the radar. And then another. Stealth forces shimmer into sight, now hopelessly outnumbered, the Space Marines take up defensive positions as a small force breaks away from the main army to approach them. With their transmissions blocked, they are unable to warn the outpost of the much larger force bearing down on them, and they hunker down for the conflict ahead. Space Marines have taken their dash action, this is happening now, and the Tau have taken infiltrate, so they will retain initiative. So let's move on to turn one prop. 
It's the strategy phase in turn one and both sides have a leader so they will both be getting one CP, taking them both up to three CP. Fitting in with the theme of the conflict tower have taken the infiltration archetype. For their attack ops they've chosen upload viral code, capture hostage and infiltration and interloper. They've chosen this stealth suit to be their interloper. They're also going to choose camouflage field engagement as a strategic ploy because there's lots of CP up for grabs in this game. Again, based on the theme, the Space Marines have taken Mark Target, Retrieval, and Plant Signal Beacon from the Recon archetype. That was the beacon for Retrieval being placed, and they are also going to play Balter Diskypline. Each turning point, both sides pick a priority objective. Red will be the Space Marines, and the Tau will be white. If either side can perform the Gamba action on either of these objectives, they'll get one victory point and one command point. Now let's move on to the first firefight phase. Right off the mark, this stealth suit in conceal order is going to move flying over the terrain onto the objective marked as priority and perform the Gamba action, getting one command point and one victory point for the Tau. In response, this incursor in the conceal order is going to move over this terrain, dash, and then also perform the Gamba action himself, getting one CP and VP for the Space Marines. Little copycat, isn't he? Fire Warrior here is just going to move and dash in the conceal order, grabbing a little bit of cover. Although the Marine on the vantage point can see the stealth suit, due to the stealth suit special rule, it is always considered concealed, um, regardless of vantage point. So he's just going to hop down onto the objective next to his buddy. There is a plan for this drone, so it's going to move and dash, still in the conceal order. This Space Marine is going to move and dash, taking the center of the board, not on objective one, but close for next turn. Fire Warrior here is going to move and then pass, making sure he's claiming objective three. The Incursor here is going to move towards the objective in the building, not moving its full distance, but making sure that in its next turn, it will be able to move onto the objective. Fire Warrior here is going to move to get line of sight on the Space Marine in the center, not gonna fire, gonna remain in the conceal order. Space Marine lead is going to move and dash towards the center of the board also, making headway towards the retrieval token is then going to pass. Turret's going to fire its smart missile system at this Space Marine. Needing sixes to hit, and they all miss. No available targets for the Overwatch, so it's back to the tower activation. This stealth suit is going to move and dash flying to the top of this building. It's a real shame that they're just two APL, as to use the camouflage field engagement and change their order, they would really need to already be in position to begin with as it's one action point to change. I do have a free of one of these with my scouting action, but up here there will be a lot of return overwatch. Just a little shuffle for the fire warrior and then we move on to why the drone was placed here. The initial plan was to have this stealth suit leader appear within fusion range and make a dude smoothie out of this space marine. However, he is in the conceal order and as such is not a viable target. So instead, he's just going to hop up on here, still in the conceal order, which means with his camo rule, unless someone is within two inches, he is effectively invisible. So here's a summary of what's happened in turn one. No casualties yet and both sides have performed gambits on priority objectives. No one holds more objectives, so we move straight on now to turn two. Turn two initiative roll, Space Marines win, so we'll see what happens as we move into the strategy phase. It's a turn two strategy phase, and I'm running out of ways to say both sides get a CP. Starting with the Space Marines, and they're going to use Bolter Discipline. Everyone's got a Bolter, and they can gain CP, so it feels like an obvious choice. It's the Tower's turn now and they're going to use Aimed Pulse Volley so they can reroll one dice if they're stationary. As per the mission, these are the objectives that are going to be chosen to be priority objectives. That's the strategy phase down, let's move into the firefight phase. Taking good use of their movement in the first turn, they positioned themselves close to most of the objectives, so now they have an opportunity to steal one. This Space Marine here is going to move on to Objective 4, activate Gamba, and then dash to get away all in the Conceal order. So that's going to be one victory point and one command point for the Space Marines. Looking to clear the back lines, the turret's going to fire at this guy. Needing sixes, just getting the one. Going to use a reroll. And it's still just the one hit. Three dice, looking for three ups. Fails two, so he would take some damage. Going to use a reroll as well. 
and he gets a second one, so the two normals cancel out the crit. No damage. With their second activation, the Space Marines are going to perform Gambit, getting a victory point and a command point. He's then going to charge into the drone and attack, making sure he's still within range to be holding that objective. Four attacks hitting on threes, gets three hits and one crit. Good start. Drone gets one success, just going to use this as a parry immediately because it's more important to try and save wounds. Only makes three saves in total for his shield generator, so he's incapacitated. There also 100% needs to be a 1 CP tactical ploy for drones to explode when they get killed. 100%. Fusion's going to move into the engage order and fire. Thanks to the FAQ, these will be hitting on threes. And with a crit, that's four mortal wounds. AP2, so there's only going to be one defense dice thrown at this. Passes and removes a normal success, but that's still going to be 15 damage going through, taking this marine straight out of action. Second activation for the leader, Stealth Suit, and he's just going to move, grabbing a bit of cover. Space Marine is going to move on to the objective in the engage order and try to mark the leader. Gets two hits and a crit. Makes a crit save and a normal save, but that's still going to leave one going through to mark the target for one victory point. The stealth suit hiding on the vantage point is going to shimmer into the engage order and fire at this space marine. Six shots with the burst cannon looking for fours. Can we roll ones because of ceaseless? And can we roll one as if he's got a mark light because of his equipment? After all of that, it is just the two hits. Space Marine has three defense dice, looking for three ups, and Space Marine power armor pays off. Second action for the stealth suit, and he's just gonna move down a level in the building. Still in the engage order, this Space Marine's gonna move round to sort of counter the Tau surging on the left flank. Remaining in the conceal order, this Fire Warrior is gonna move and dash behind the crate. Leader's going to remain in the conceal order and just move up a little bit to get objective one. And then he's going to pass. This fire warrior is just going to move to get line of sight on this concealed space marine and shoot. But first he's going to move into the engage order. Four attacks looking for four ups. Hits twice and they're both crits. Space marine gets three defense dice and also makes two crit saves so no damage. This Fire Warrior is going to shoot the leader. He's also been stationary, so we'll get to reroll one dice because of the aimed pulse volley. The pulse rifle has decent damage if it can go through, but with a four up to hit, it's not very accurate. Gets one hit, but can reroll because he's been stationary, ending up with two successes. But the Space Marine makes all his three up saves, so no damage goes through again. With a second action, he's just going to duck around the corner. And then finally, the stealth suit is going to move onto the objective and a little closer to the enemy lines. That's the end of turn two. Here's a recap of what's happened. First casualties for each team, but there's still quite a lot of operatives left in play. Space Marines scored both the gambits and they do control more now, so they'll be getting two victory points at the end of turn two. Moving on to turn three. Hello, my love. Tau win the initiative roll-off and we'll be going first as we move into the strategy phase. Both sides get a CP, now let's look at any ploys that are getting revealed. Tau aren't going to use any ploys so we move on to the Incursors who are going to use Bolter Discipline to be able to shoot twice if they don't fight and in case they need a fight they're going to use Shock Assault to be able to do that twice as well if they don't shoot. There's nothing else to be revealed in the turn 3 strategy phase, so we'll move into the primary objective choices. These are the choices for the primary objectives for turn 3, and with that we'll move into the firefight phase. Needing to press forward to be able to get hostage in later turns and looking to clear some space marines off objectives, the fusion leader is going to move towards the enemy leader and shoot. Gets three hits but no crits, which would kill him, but if he makes one save, then he would live with one wound. Uses a reroll, but still it's just three hits. Fails the save, but will also use a reroll. 
and gets a save so the Incursor leader will live with just one wound remaining. Looking to keep their leader alive for the morale and to have bodies on objectives, the Space Marines are going to use one command point for and they shall know no fear. So that the engine model can move his full movement and he will move and dash in the conceal order onto objective 2 away from all the shooting. Burst Cannon Stealth Suit's going to pop out and shoot at this Space Marine. Six attacks with a burst cannon, looking for fours. Such a good spread, I forget I can reroll that three because of the equipment. Takes a cover save, but fails the other two. Gonna use a reroll, and it's still a fail. Which means with the crit and the three remaining successes, that's gonna be a dead space marine. Not necessarily a strategically important kill, however, it is freeing up the backfield and the Space Marines deployment zone so that the town can potentially dash into it to get some late game victory points with interloper and upload viral code. This Space Marine is going to change into the engage order and charge the stealth suit on the objective. He's then going to use his next action to fight. Attacking with the combat blade, that's four attacks, hitting on threes. Gets two successes and one crit. Looking for fives and the stealth suit fails to hit. So with the crit going through for five damage and the two normal successes for three apiece, that's 11 damage taking the stealth suit out. And with that, the interloper is killed as is the Tau's hopes of getting two victory points for interloper. And for his final action, the Space Marine will perform Gamba on this primary objective. The Tau have focused too much on whittling down the opposing forces, whereas the Space Marines have taken a clear lead in the victory points. The turret now fires at the Marine on objective 5. Gets two hits, which are crits. Makes all three saves, but it's only enough to cancel out one crit, so one's going to be going through. The Marine is then going to move into the conceal order, activate the gambit on the objective, and then pass. Now needing to double bodies on it to score the objective, this fire warrior is going to move forward and try and take a pot shot at the marine. Shooting from the fire warrior manages to hit with two. All the power armor saves are made and it's now his turn to shoot back, this time in overwatch. Absolutely not messing about, that's two hits and two crits. Manages one normal save and a crit save, but it still leaves a crit and a normal success going through, taking him out of action. And with that overwatch, there is now no way for the Tau to hold more objectives this turn. Some bad target priority from the town now showing itself in this six point lead. Fire Warrior is going to move and dash remaining in the conceal order to get close to that drop zone. This Fire Warrior is then going to pass on the objective. And for the final activation of the turn, this Fire Warrior is going to move and dash onto objective one in the conceal order. With the final activation of turn 3 now, let's take a look at what's happened. It would seem some hesitant movement from the Tau has left them in a poor position to score their TAC Ops and the primary objectives for the mission, the result of which is now an 8 point lead for the Space Marines. Let's see if they can bridge that gap in the final turn. Tau win the initiative and to be fair to have any chance they really needed to. Start of the final turn and both sides will get one command point. The Tau will also be awarded 43 victory points. I mean wow, just well done, good job Tau, go get them champ. One can dream, instead they will reveal upload viral code. They aren't going to use any ploys so we move to the Space Marines who are again going to use Bolter Discipline for the shoosting shoosting and Shock Assault for the schleiching schleiching on their combat blades. So those are the ploys being played and it's going to be a complete Hail Mary for the Tau to get back in this game. Here are the objectives being chosen by both sides to be priority objectives. And with that done, let's move into the firefight phase. So how do the Tau bridge the gap? If they can score both gambits and then secure those objectives, they'll be able to get four victory points. The Space Marines have two injured models here that could be prime targets for capture hostage, netting them two more victory points. And this Fire Warrior can get one VP for upload viral code, which would bring them to eight. Just one victory point shy of a draw. It's time to try and play the perfect turn. 
This Fire Warrior is going to use the incredibly overcosted Upload Viral Code for two action points to get one victory point. Shitting all over the perfect turn, this Marine will perform Gambit, then abandon the objective to charge and attack the Stealth Suit. The Tau will in turn use Stand and Fire for one CP to fight using their ranged weapon stats. Space Marines get three hits, uses a command reroll, and gets an extra crit. Firing its burst cannon at point blank range and using a reroll, the stealth suit gets three hits and a crit. Space Marine attacks with his crit, doing five damage. The stealth suit then parries a normal success. Space Marine strikes again for three damage. And then the stealth suit parries again, leaving its own crit and normal, going through for damage against the Space Marine. Stealth Suit not only survives, but injures the Space Marine in combat. Fire Warrior will perform the Gamba action on Objective 1 and pass. Could move into the Engage order with a leader and do something, but then he'd be targeted by the turret, so he's just going to hide on Objective 2 in the Conceal order. Stealth Suit's going to disengage, moving on to the objective. This Marine's also just going to pass in the Conceal Order on Objective 5, so it means the turret is going to fire at the only available option. Needing 6 is to hit with the Smart Missile System, and he doesn't get a single one. Going to use a Command Reroll, and it's still no hits. Overwatch now from the Marine into the Fire Warrior, needing 5s because he's also injured. Gets a crit, and the Fire Warrior manages to make the save. This Fire Warrior holding Objective 2 is just going to pass. Fusion Leader is going to fly up here within 2 inches and take out the Space Marine, getting some sweet sweet victory points for Capture Hostage. Gets a hit and a crit, and that crit will mean 4 mortal wounds, leaving him with just one remaining. Fails the one save he gets, so he's incapacitated. Getting the Tau 2 victory points for Capture Hostage and Infiltrate. But as you can see, at the end of their turn, their lofty ideas about getting a perfect score have failed. They managed to get up to 5 victory points to the Space Marines 10. Here's a quick recap. A fairly uneventful turn, lots of standing still for the Space Marines, but at the end of it, the Tau do have more objectives, so we'll get an additional 2 victory points, taking their final score up to 7 against the Space Marines 10. So that will be a Space Marine victory for the Blood Angels and the Incursors. In terms of the game, I think Tau made some questionable decisions in terms of tactics, hunting down kills instead of maybe focusing more on the gambits, getting the victory points where it counted. I think the Tau should have used Stand and Fire when the Interloper was targeted. Then if he's able to survive, he could disengage. Again, not able to get off the board because it's an additional ad action point but they could have at least been eligible to get off the board and then score those much needed victory points at the end of the game the stealth suits are great they've got a great rule obviously if they're in conceal they're always in conceal it's a little bit of a shame they're only two apl though um potentially only running six of these in a team you'd have a very low action economy with your models especially with certain um kind of tac ops requiring actions that can cost two at two ap um for upload viral code it's two ap so you need to be in position ahead of time to even get one victory point from it the fire warriors are kind of pants those pulse rifles or pulse carbines are just a little bit rubbish um they're not going to kill a marine anything with power armor is going to be fine it'd be interesting to see them against a weaker team in terms of defense but against a space marine team pretty rubbish I like the drones and I think I'll look at different drone lists, but honestly, I'd probably run them with more stealth suits or pathfinders to get a couple of rail rifles. I think stealth suits, a couple of pathfinders and then some drones might be quite a good list. Thanks so much to my patrons over at Patreon. They get advanced release of all videos, the Discord server, and I'll be doing more there as soon as I can just figure out what will be cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the list. If you've got a great Tau team out there, let me know. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.